Actually, I think that's our first run in a really long time. Well, today is power problem day on Zephyr. So one of the things we really wanted to test was uh, the automatic build. We are off to have our anniversary lunch. There we go. Very cool. <laughs> We've decided to go out for a quick run for our first time ever in I don't know how long. So, uh, yeah, we're going to struggle a bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Beautiful day here. Well, we had to cut the run short, but it was good. Uh, it's gotten really darn cold. Pretty tired considering we don't run, run that often, do we? No. <laughs> Not at all. Actually, I think that's our first run in a really long time. So, that's good. <laughs> well, today is power problem day on Zephyr. Um, I've been noticing that uh, the alternator hasn't been charging the batteries on the boat when, the, when it's been running. Unfortunately, electrics is not really my strong suit at all, but I've been doing enough research and then reading some of my service manuals to sort of do some preliminary tests. Now, the problem's been sort of intermittent. Um, so, uh, you know, I wasn't sure whether it was wiring initially or what. So um, the first test I was told to do was to check to see if there's actually any power coming from the positive and negative terminals at the back. So I've checked the voltage and there's nothing. Um, so I'm not sure what's wrong with the alternator. I don't know anything about alternators. I'm also thinking about maybe upgrading to a, a larger alternator. So um, this is 60 amp. Um, somebody told me to go for like 100 amp. I have no idea. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments below um, and let me know what you sh you know what your thoughts are on alternators. So our engine is a Yanmar 54 horsepower uh, for JH. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. So I'm going to take it off. Uh, here in Palenza, there is actually a Yanmar service guy. So I'm going to take it in and see what he has to say. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the belt off. Um, and then I'm going to make sure I take some photos of the wiring harness at the back so that I put it back correctly. And then, um, then I'll disconnect all the wiring. And then it's just two bolts to take the alternator off. So uh, let's get started. So to get the alternator off, as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the belt off. To do that, there's a bolt here that I'm going to loosen, which moves the alternator left or right for tensioning. So I'll do that, I'll loosen that, and then that should allow me to pull the alternator belt off of the three pulleys that you see here. Right. And the belt comes off, as you can see. And now the alternator is free to come off. So I've already disconnected the wires at the back, so now it's just free to pull out. Okay. And there we are. That's our alternator. I mean, it looks all right. I don't know if it's the original one with the boat or not, so. But we'll take it in and get the guys to test it and see what's what. And Hopefully, maybe it's something simple. Good morning. So day two of trying to get the alternator fixed. I took it in yesterday, but they were closed. Spanish time. So, But we've just gotten up, and it is a beautiful morning. Check out this anchorage. It is like glass. And the water is quite possibly some of the clearest water I've seen in a long time. Here, check this out. That is, I think we're in about 10 feet of water at the moment. And it is so clear. You can see our anchor chain and it goes to about there because it's completely buried. We had our uh, breakfast on the go. As you can see over here, our toast was on 
and unfortunately the propane finished so we were out of gas and James was out there trying to get the next one but we had a bit of an issue when we came to Europe because they don't sell propane they only sell butane so um, we've actually got a mix in the end which is kind of what we use in Australia anyway LPG gas so um, James is trying to fix that up but obviously it's got a different nozzle on um, so maybe maybe we'll be having breakfast out today or cereal we've got plenty of cereal let's check out what um, James Langridge is doing out here how's it going babe so is that the old one that's out? This? That's yeah. the new one. That's the new one. Stop been running. Propane's working. You're always so surprised when I get things to work. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just go, oh wow. <laughs> what we're running is a mix of butane and propane um, that was given to us. Uh, our boat was built in the States, so it's built for a propane system, which runs about 100 PSI. And butane, I think, runs, well, way less than that. We can run a butane mix through this system without having to change the hoses, whereas I think if it was the other way, you'd have problems, so. But Nat thought we were gonna blow up. I did. But yeah, propane is pressurized in these cylinders at 100 PSI. Yeah. And now I'm just wasting it. Where are we off to, baby? We are off to have our anniversary lunch because it's nine years today that me and James have been together, so. Lunch is cheaper than dinner, so <laughs> we're gonna do that. anniversary today and um, I decided that we'd go to Lidl's so now we've got the long walk back and uh, we're both carrying everything back <laughs> So one of the things we really wanted to test was um, the automatic bilge. Now we had tested it once before, but we've done a lot of miles um, since we last tested it. So this is our uh, automatic bilge pump. It's a Rulemate 1100. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some water into it and see if it works. So here we go. Today's boat cleaning day, hey? Oh, it's been epic, hasn't it? But it, it yeah. needed to be done, so. And Nat loves to clean. <laughs> I don't really. Just um, finishing up the batter for this massive cake I'm making for my cousin's birthday. He's working just up here. He doesn't know it, but I thought I'd bake him a cake as a surprise. And I'm not very good at baking, James knows that. <laughs> I just kind of wing it, but today I followed a recipe bit by bit. However much flour it told me to put in, I put it in. So I have really paid attention. So if it doesn't come out good, I'll be annoyed. <laughs> yeah, you normally just kind of wing it, don't you? I normally always wing it, will never follow a recipe. And, um, but they yeah. Always, yeah, they always taste and really good though. It looks massive like I've never made this much batter um, but it's because I'm doing like layers hopefully so we'll see how we go yeah, in the oven it's gonna take forever though in this tiny oven but anyway it should be good it's intimate look at you the best bit <laughs> <laughs> I plan on taking over that bowl in a second look at these two bad boys <gasps> These aren't going to cook at the same rate, are they? They should do. Why wouldn't they? Hmm? Why wouldn't they? 
because one's on the bottom. How long do they need? I don't know. We just go by toothpick thing. Toothpick? Yeah. When it's ready, it'll be ready. Chocolate cake nearly done. That looks amazing. Nutella topping? Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Look at that. I just put in the finishing touches on. And what's the finishing touch? After eight. You're putting after eight. Just so it looks like it's store bought in case it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> then no one can say, oh, this is pretty bad for a store bought one. Because <laughs> who's ever heard of a cake being bad that's store bought? No one. They always taste good. Yeah. And that is Vicente's cake. That is amazing. So what? tell Finished. everybody what it is. It is chocolate cake with more chocolate, Nutella on top, with more chocolate sprinkles on top, and to top it all off, some after eights just stuck in there so it looks a little bit more profesh. <laughs> oh my god. I want the slice that has the after eights. No. We think they'll get that. That's who the cake's for. So for my cousin's birthday, I've actually put together as a little present, a little survival kit. If you haven't seen them already, they're all over the internet. You can do different ones, survival kit for a surfer, survival kit for um, a brother, or a dad, like there's a ton of stuff. And the one that I've done for him is survival kit for a fisherman because he loves fishing. I thought it was kind of like a bit of a unique present. So check them out because they're really fun to do in there. You can do them at home with just little bits and pieces. Yeah, you just get loads of different things and then you just start throwing them into a bag. So um, I've got him like a fishing magazine so when he's fishing he's got something to read. You put in like chocolate and stuff like that and just say like in case you don't catch anything you got food. You put in like coffee to keep, keep you awake while you're fishing. Just a bunch of stuff. I mean there's like other um, stuff that I got him like actually fishing stuff um, but yeah like you make it funny I put band-aids in case you um, catch yourself and not fish on a hook so do you, yeah you can make it funny and it's a really cool way so um, and then you just write it all out um, on a piece of paper what are we doing, honey? we've got chocolate cake we got coffee and we're just waiting for Bethan to arrive and then we will be celebrating so stoked we are getting done Bags packed to a round the run today We're really on our way, yeah Feel like we'll soon explode Got the good old party mode, okay? Go! <laughs> <laughs> I got a hat from mi gente, um, with, which is what he works at. Um, maritime life saving. Oh wow. Let's see. There we go. Very cool. <laughs> we walk down to check Vicente's 20 meter maritime life saving boat. If you are ever in trouble, this is what will be heading your way at just over 20 knots and with an epic team on board. I'm going to try my luck at some fishing. I got all these fishing techniques from my cousin. He loves fishing. Yeah, he set all this up for me, taught me how to do fisherman's knot. I think I know how to do it now, but I still told him to get it done for me so that it would be easier. <laughs> so I've got some scraps of food, which I'm going to put on these little hooks and that should catch the little fishies. And then I've got the bigger hooks for the bigger fish 
um, which I've got to set up on the hand line or something because we don't have a, a pole, a fishing pole. So um, yeah, let's see if even this works for the little fish. <laughs> Oh well, no luck with my fishing techniques. <laughs> Need to get better at it. I thought your technique was good. What, my jigging? What do you call it? Your jigging. My jigging? Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, nothing. Not a single bite. Oh well. It is blowing like 20 knots out there. So. Yeah, but I thought I'd try my luck with it. But Oh well, another day. Oh. We'll do the same. Join us next week as the calm is swapped by pure madness as we ride out another crazy storm at anchor. So it's all going off at the moment. Um, I've been up all night, but um, something didn't feel right and I went up and I and had a look and a boat behind us is broken free. It's washed somewhere onto the shore. As a young girl, it feels worse. Consider clicking on us to subscribe to our channel and follow the journey aboard Zephyr. So offshore, play full and free.